Hey folks, welcome back. So we have our basic lightning setup done over in Unity. And what we want now is more control over the look and more control over the animation. So we're going to go and build some more details into our Houdini setup. And this is where Houdini starts to excel when you want to have more control. It's also where our networks start to get more complicated. Uh, at the moment, we've got a very simple network. We've only got four nodes here. There's a couple of things we definitely need to try and address. Uh, we need, at the very least, to be able to control the width of the lightning as it goes down from the root of the lightning towards the tips. We also need to get an alpha mask so that we can animate the lightning over on the Unity side. On top of that, I'd like to have more control of the overall shapes of the lightning so I can put in more detail or less detail if I need to. So the first problem I want to tackle is my width problem. So at the moment, what's happening is we are using a bounding box expression to try and make the lightning thinner towards the end. If you want to see what the bounding box looks like, you can just turn it on. That is the bounding box for this particular object. And at the moment, it's giving us a value for BBY. So it's going from zero up to one. I'm going to put back on my model here. Um, so we're saying that the wire radius is fatter at the bottom. And as we go up in Y, it's going to get thinner and thinner. So the problem with that, of course, is, is any of these branches going off to the side here are staying too thick because their Y value is too low. So we need to come up with a different solution for getting a, a value for our wire radius so that we get a nice thin piece of lightning uh, at all the ends. So there is a new node in Houdini called the mask along geometry node, which is going to help us out here. So I'm going to hit tab and I'm going to type mask along geometry. And I'm going to hook this up between my L system here and my polywire. It's going to generate a number for me and I'm going to use this number in my polywire. So that's why it has to go in here. And the number it's going to generate is a distance value. And it's going to give me a distance value from a start point. You can see we set our start point just here towards the ends of the geometry. So I'm going to put in zero for my start point and zero is going to be this number down the bottom here. Now we can check that out before the polywire if we like. If we need to go and see our point numbers, we can just turn them on here and you can see that, yeah, there is zero right there. So that's our start point. And there's a visualizer here that you can turn on and off, which will tell you how far this mask attribute is moving along our wire. So at the moment, you can see that it's, it's only doing this little section here. So I need to increase the radius. This node is creating uh, an attribute which is going between zero and one. And the attribute is called mask. And we can just check here, if we middle mouse on the node, you can see we've got mask, it's a float, it's a single number. Okay, and this visualizer is trying to visualize those numbers for us. If we want to see the actual numbers, we can go and open up the geometry spreadsheet here. And because this is a point attribute, I need to be on points. And you can see that there's my mass values here. And they go from very low numbers here, 0 0.29, all the way up to 1. Okay, so I can adjust this a little bit if I want to. Uh, I can pull this down just a small bit just to get these numbers a little closer to 0. And that would be getting me a better spread overall for my mass values. Now, I'm going to close up the geometry spreadsheet for now. So I have this number and I want to use this number in my polywire here to drive the width. So let's jump over onto our polywire. And what I'm going to do is type at mask. Okay, well, it's doing something. It's not doing exactly what I expect. That's because the values are a little bit too big. So I'm going to divide it by 20. And now it's starting to give me what I want. It's thicker at this end and it is thinner towards the ends here. So I do want lightning that's going to be fairly thin. So I'll put this up around 40 here. Now I could always go back and I could adjust my radius a little bit as well uh, to make things thinner or a little bit wider. Uh, there's a remapping ramp here as well. So I have quite a lot of control in terms of the overall fall off of the shape. But that's good enough for now. That looks much neater than what we had previously. Now, if I want to turn the mask off, I can just come back to my mask along geometry and I can click this button here and that will turn off that visualizer. So that's our first problem solved. Now, the next problem I have to solve is I want to be able to animate the lightning growing. And that means I want to have an alpha that is going to be white at the tip here and black towards the ends. And this is actually the same sort of problem. So we can use the mask along geometry node again to get us uh, a color value this time, which we can put into a texture. So we'll go down to the end of our network here and 
and I'm going to use another mask along geometry node here. We can visualize this one. Again, we need to give it a starting point. We can use zero here, and that's going to start off our mask. I'm going to set this radius to be maybe around three for now. And you can see that we are getting this color that's running down along the length of our lightning again. Now this time, I don't want to use it to drive width. I actually want to put it into a color value. Uh, it's stored as mask at the moment. So that's the name of the attribute. So I'm going to take the mask value and I'm going to use the color node. And in the color node, by default, it's set to constant here. I'm going to turn off the visualizer on the mask geometry node. And you can see that my lightning goes blue here. Um, and normally we use this to color things. You can see that there's an option to have a ramp from an attribute. And I am going to type in the attribute I want, which is mask in this case. And now it is giving me a ramp from black to white using the mask values. So we want to use this as a texture over in Unity. So you can think of this like a gradient going into an alpha. And um, we're going to animate the appearance of our lightning. So I want there to be values that are very close to black at the tips and an even spread of gray values all the way up to the end. That's to ensure that the top part doesn't just pop into existence. So let's go and start adding some values here. To add a gradient, to add a stop to the gradient, you just click on the swatch. Uh, you can click the little down arrow to get some more details on the particular values. So I'm going to put some extra stops here. A zero is going to be completely transparent. Uh, so I wanted to increase relatively quickly. Uh, so let's put in a value of uh, 0 0.1 here. We have one here. So all the bits that are married to one will pop into existence. So I needed to drop from one fairly quickly. And I'm going to put it down to maybe 0 0.75 here like this. Now you can see it's starting to get difficult to see exactly what is happening in the viewport. So I'm going to bring up my background display options and set it over to light here just so we can have a better idea of what's going on. And there's my dark values going up towards gray here like this. And let's put another value in the middle and we'll set this to 0 0.5. There we go. Again, I can double check some of these values if I need to. The easy way to do this is just to add a very bright color. So we can just add a very, very bright color in here for pink. And we should be able to see the pink spread across as it moves through. Yeah, it's going all the way from the end all the way down to the tips. Perfect. And then just to, I can just pull it off here uh, to get rid of it. So that gradient uh, ramp doesn't look too bad. So that is going to be my alpha mask out. Now, now I've created this CD value. It's attached to the points. And we can write that out to a texture. I'm actually just going to be extra cautious here. And I'm going to add an attribute blur just underneath the color here. And instead of blurring point positions, which is essentially smoothing out our point position here, I'm going to change this to CD. And that is going to just blur off the color even more. So I can get an even spread across the piece of geometry. Now, it's convention in Houdini to put a null at the end of a chain. So I'm just going to put a null here. And I'm just going to call this out animation alpha. The other issue I wanted to solve was to try and get a bit more control over the shapes. So I'm just going to put down a point jitter node and a point jitter is just going to add a little bit of noise onto our line. Now by default, it is going to be much too strong. So I'm going to lower the value here to just 0 0.1. So this is using noise to deform our line. Usually when I'm using noises, what I like to do is I like to have a very light noise to start off with to change the base shape. And usually I scale the noise so that it is not the same in all axes. So in this case, I'm going to scale down the Y component of my noise here. So that gets me some broad control over the initial shape. Now, often the noise is a bit much. So usually what you would do afterward would be you would add a smooth node. So you could just smooth things out or soften things off just a little bit. And by default, the smooth node is much too strong. So I'm going to pull this strength value down to maybe 0 0.5. Now, I'm going to apply a second round of noise to get some higher frequency detail. So... I'm visualizing the end mesh here. Let's go and look at the uh, the initial lines that come out of the L system where we're adding the noise. So in this case, what I need to do to add more points onto my line 
to get more detailing is I'm going to use a subdivide and the subdivide will subdivide the curve. So now I am getting twice the amount of points overall. So I'm going to use a subdivide and then I'm going to put down another point jitter node here. And after my point jitter, I'm going to put down a smooth. Okay, and we can see that the point jitter values here are much too high. So I'm going to lower these point jitter values down. And again, I need to use a much smaller value, 0 0.1, something like that will do for now. And let's turn them on and off again, just to see what it looks like on the actual meshed geometry. So I can select all of these nodes here and I can just hit the bypass flag. That's what I had previously and this is what I have now. Okay, so that's added a good bit more detail overall and will make the scale of the lightning feel bigger. Usually what I do when I've got a block of nodes like this, I move them over to the left hand side. It makes it very easy for me to say, oh, those nodes are just the noise nodes and I can turn them on and off very easily. Okay, so that solves our final problem, which is getting more detail into our lightning. In the next video, I want to take a look at outputting the tiled texture map, but I also want to try and pack as much information into that tiled atlas as I can. We can then take that information back over to the Unity side and create a custom shader to give us a lot of control over the look of our lightning. Hope you found this useful and see you in the next video.